<laughs> well, hello, my name is Ken Osnes. I'm the Vice President of Franchise Development at the Belfort Franchise Group. I'm here today with Matt O'Rourke, the President of Z Plumbers. Hi, Ken. Matt, welcome. Hey, uh, first question I want to know is how'd you get into the plumbing business? Oh, how did I get into the plumbing business? Well, let's say that I was doing the, the American dream of thinking I was going to go to college. And after high school, went to college. And once I was in college, I didn't know what I really wanted to do. I thought I, I, I knew I wanted to help people. So I was going to be a teacher. Uh, but going that route, I just didn't see how that was going to fit in with, with really what I really wanted to do. At an early age of 12, I started caddying. And I, I was able to spend a lot of time with business-minded people, people who got to go out and golf during the week, during mm -hmm. the day, and I'm thinking, wow, I want to do that, right? Yeah. So, and I always had this love, really, for home improvement and, and wanting to be in business for myself. So, um, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go into business school and start going that route. So I started doing that, and then somewhere along the lines, I thought it would be a good idea to get into the medical field, so I went to nursing school for a year, and hmm. so I think that's where really where I started feeling that I could do just about anything and I still like the home improvement back then the, the show trading places yeah I loved watching that and I'm like I'm gonna start doing that hmm. so I got into landscaping for a short time and enjoyed that uh, I painted for a short time loved that and finally I, I asked my father I said what what could I do because I didn't know much about the trades and all of that and he's like well you need to get a, a license in a trade and your choices are elect electrical, mechanical, or plumbing. And so I started looking for work down, down those paths, still not really understanding what it meant to have a trades license. Mm -hmm. uh, but I found a job in, in a small plumbing company and took the job and quickly realized I enjoyed doing it. And the owner of the company was a great person to work for. And so I just started my three years of apprenticeship with him and hmm. and kept on doing it. And so now you've been a master plumber for a while. For quite a for quite a while. And you start this brand, Z Plumbers. And what is it about the plumbing industry in this day and age that makes a lot of sense? Because there's obviously reasons why, you know, people kind of have a stereotype of what a plumber is, what a plumber looks like. Uh, you don't look like that kind of guy quite honestly. So yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> tell me about the industry and, and where, what's the difference between now and maybe 15 years ago? So I think the, the greatest thing about plumbing is it's really one of those hand on the job training hands on. And I enjoyed it because I go everywhere. I'm, I travel quite a bit mm -hmm. to different parts of the community, meet all kinds of different people, get to go into all types of different people's homes. I've been in some of the nicest wealthiest homes and all the way down to the people that really need help so mm -hmm. i seen that side of it um i saw an opportunity in the business side of it where there is still to this day i mean there's a couple big players but there's not one plumbing company with a name or the word plumbing in it that's nationally recognized and you can't say that about a lot of uh industry you know, mm -hmm. your, your candy makers, your pop makers, your clothing lines. I and mean, there's big players out there that if you don't have a ton of capital and a lot of backing, right. you're not going to be able to, to be successful like that. And in plumbing, I do feel the trade has done a, a fairly poor job of, of earning the respect that it deserves mm -hmm. and getting the younger people into it. When I go to Ohio and do continuing education, I am still, to this day, the youngest one there by 15, 20 years. I mean, it's, there's a huge gap between the, the first, second generation master plumber than, than where we're at now. Mm -hmm. and, and meaning most, the average age of a plumber to the, at this time is 60 years old plus. Wow. And there's gonna be, there is an epidemic of shortage of plumbers. And, and we're starting to see it and you're starting to hear about it. Mm -hmm. And people are starting to to really realize that the trades is a good way to go. Where when I grew up, all you heard was college, college, college. You got to go to college. And if you don't have college education, mm -hmm. you're, you just have this perception of yourself that you, you didn't 
do what you're supposed to do and, and you're an underachiever. And I thought that way for quite a while, you know, even when I was in school still. But now we're starting to see the young people come back around and now we have to do a much better job of, of creating a perception of plumbers that it's not what it's been perceived to be with the, the butt crack image and the, the jokes of or yeah. the butt of the jokes, you know, um, and the industry is really going a whole different direction. It's fun. It's fun to see it. So you mentioned trying to get a whole different image. What are the kind of things that you and your brand have, have in place to try to change that image? Yeah. So we do a lot of soft skills training. Um, you know, how to go into people's homes, wearing the booties, wearing gloves. Uh, we supply latex gloves to all of our plumbers because mm-hmm. we don't want their nails to be dirty. And, you know, one of the jokes is if you're a plumber, you don't chew your nails, right? <laughs> so I think we've taken that approach, the professional image of, you know, trying to show the branding side of things, the brand image, mm-hmm. and hope that by leading with a strong brand image, we're going to attract plumbers that or, or people that, don't want to have that butt crack image and yeah. be treated as professionals, which most people do treat us as professionals. And once yeah. they see it, you know, the clean look and uh, uh, that started probably 20 years ago, honestly. But what happened was they wanted you to wear white shirts. So there was a big push in some of these um, good sized brands. You're going to wear a white shirt so you look clean. Well, plumbers didn't, plumbers themselves didn't feel comfortable. So yeah. we kind of just try to take the golf pro look yeah and that seems to be a comforting look for a lot of people and say look this is the route we're going to go uh we're going to train you we're going to teach you some business and some fun good foundation Mm -hmm. stuff to to try to to expand the trade i hear a lot of when people think about a plumber i hear a lot of talk about it's the guy who's coming in you know you picture the guy with the plunger and you picture the guy having to tear the toilet out or or you know maybe he's installing a faucet in your house. You think of a lot, a lot of retail, or excuse me, residential types of retail plumbing. So what are what are the aspects of plumbing that are the core pieces of a Z Plumber franchise? Right. So just like a, with a lot, you can specialize in a lot of areas. So we we consider I break down plumbing in four verticals: your plumbing service, mm-hmm. which is residential, commercial. Uh, water heaters, sump pumps, fixture replacement, faucet repair. Okay. Uh, then we have drain cleaning, sewer and drain cleaning. So all your drain cleaning, and there's some drain cleaning only companies and some plumbing only companies. So we've kind of broken mm-hmm. that out to try to help with the marketing strategy and also training. You can get young w- men and women into the trade and get them fairly quickly doing drain cleaning. Mm-hmm. Um, that gives them a good opportunity to learn and practice their sales because, you know, Drain cleaning is an emergency. So if you have a problem or a backup drain, you need somebody rather quickly. So we've we look at that separately to build out that side of the business alone. Uh, and then we have new construction plumbing or construction plumbing. So I saw a huge opportunity there with the Belfour brand when when we started talking about adding plumbing to the Belfour group family. Belfour is the largest general contractor in the world. And what better way to, to start a plumbing business than underneath that umbrella of services. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, we do recognize that new construction plumbing and uh, remodeling and restore, restoration plumbing is a huge piece of this. And, and that's where we really wanted to focus our, our yeah. adding that piece of it, right? And then finally, uh, trenchless technologies. What's, what's that? Trenchless technologies is, uh, there are still millions of feet of pipe in, in the United States that are over 100 years old. And you hear a lot on the news about our infrastructure. Mm-hmm. I would say a lot of people probably correlate that with roads, but the plumbing and the drains and the sewer pipes and the water lines underneath the ground are old and they're in need of replacement. Well, trenchless technologies, we can, as plumbers, when we clean a pipe or, or open a pipe, we can now go in there and restore that pipe without any excavating okay. or any digging at all. So um, that's a great vertical to add to your business if you're not doing that already. I hear a lot of uh, pipes and such are like 40 years old on average in, in the country. Life expectancy is 50 years old for, uh, for pipes underground. So think about the age of your homes in some parts of this country that are well over the age of 50 and yeah. still have original pipes. Wow. So you mentioned earlier about you apprenticed under somebody and then you said some 
people who get into the, you get people into the business that you hire, they can be doing sewer sewer backups and and just different parts of di things. different parts of things that but they can't they don't have plumbing licenses in doing that. So they're you're hiring those, they're under you as the master plumber or the franchisee has those uh, individuals that work for them. Are there any examples in your business where there's been someone who worked under somebody who now owns a franchise or open their own territory? As Absolutely. A so you know, probably I would say the most important person in a plumbing business is the number two. It's probably not the <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's the title of this yeah, podcast. There, right. There you go. Most important person, number, number two. two. <laughs> yeah. So you have the owner, right? Uh, the guy who started the plumbing business or the licensed plumber who went off and said, I'm going to be my own boss, right? Yeah. So he goes out into a truck and he starts plumbing and he has no idea he's, he's now considered an entrepreneur or a business owner, right? Mm -hmm. So he's doing his own thing. And he's probably at some point knows he needs an, a helper or an apprentice. Yeah. So he hires this, this young man or woman and that's his right hand man, his number two, right? Mm -hmm. Teaches him everything he knows for three, four or five years and says, you know what, you know what you're doing. He's going to go off on his own. And now the, the owner gets mm -hmm. to go out and enjoy life. And then the number two is doing all the work, right? Yeah. Well, what happens when that number two says, I want to go off and do it on my own? You know, I, I'm which not happens licensed, a lot, which, which well, I think happen. is the biggest problem we have. You know, we plumbers and, the, and same with the, the gentleman I did my apprenticeship under great guy, friends to this day. But he didn't have that that uh, big corporate mindset where you have an organizational chart and mm -hmm. you have benefits and you have structure where those people that you bring in and you train have a place to grow. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I wanted to start a business where I can create a foundation where people can grow in advance. And not so that they just go off and open up their own company and mm -hmm. then we, they start their own all over again, but where we provided uh, a chain where people can elevate and, and do things on their own. So yeah, what uh, one of our franchisees was able to take his number two and then put him in the position to own his own franchise um, and still be part of it. Yeah. So they're working together as a team. You know, the hardest thing in plumbing is when something goes wrong, it's an emergency. If you're a one man, two man, three man operation, and you're on vacation and that person takes vacation, you're really down, you don't really have a business anymore. Right. right? And you gotta make a decision, you gotta answer the phone all the time, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, like your clients want you to, mm -hmm. or are you gonna be, I'm gonna work when I want to, and then you risk losing a good client because you can't get there when they need you. Yeah. So, so I understood at an early stage of business, what call center is probably the most important thing. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what are some of those services that that your franchise provides that would make it attractive for an existing plumber to say, I want to join that group because those are things I don't have. Right. So call center, start with that. Call one. center. Yeah, that's the, the nucleus of everything is answering that phone all the time. Um, if you can answer that phone all the time, you basically can um, manage the client's expectations. Mm -hmm. The last thing a client wants to do is call you and it goes to your voicemail and they have no idea when they're going to you're going to call them back. Mm -hmm. um, you may be a great operator and answer the phone all the time, but there's no question that's the got to be the number one thing of burnout. I mean, mm -hmm. when you're on vacation with your family, the last thing they want to do is hear you on the phone talking to a client. And the last thing the client wants to find out is you're not going to be home for a week and they got water coming out of their ceiling, right? Mm -hmm. So we started with the call center, um, found uh, an expert in plumbing that has done dispatching and knows how to, to manage clients and their expectations. and Let's start there. So we definitely mm -hmm. start with the call center 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. So that way when you're on vacation, you know that your clients are still being mm -hmm. um, spoken to, communicated with, and set their expectations. Uh, second, I would say, is the fundamentals of the business accounting. Knowing how much money you're getting or how much money you've earned, and then knowing that the AR or the accounts receivable that you've worked for is going to come in. Uh, I've seen a lot of times where busting your butt, working hard, and then not getting paid or not knowing where that money is. And, and again, it's not a matter of not knowing how to do it, but when you build a business and you start to get to that three truck, four truck, five truck operation, mm -hmm. now you have to hire somebody to help you out on the inside. 
you're a plumber. I'm a plumber. We don't do accounting. We've done a little bit, but when you're getting to the, those types of trucks, mm. I mean, that's a lot more complicated. So now you're managing more than just the plumber. You're managing right. office staff, business minded people. It, it's, it is a little bit, it is a lot different than managing the plumbing, which what we're experts in. Mm. So that that's big. HR is another key in marketing. Uh, mm -hmm. When I started plumbing, I found the name by going find dot coms. You know, if the, if you can get the dot com, then you got the name of the business, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a lot harder now than than that. It's mm -hmm. understanding the different generations of people, the different types of plumbing. Um, we see from our current franchisees, they wanted the marketing. Well, I would say most plumbers have enough work if they answered the phone and booked all the jobs mm -hmm. instead of choosing which jobs they want to do. So it, the work's going to be there and it's always going to be there. It's, it's recession proof. I mean, every plumber who sees this is probably not saying, I don't need any more work. You know, it's, it's how do I manage the work that I have? Right. So it's come a long way from back in the day where people would say, I want to pick a name that starts with an A. So I'm the first name in the yellow right, pages yellow that people pages. see, right? So now it's far more of a branding appeal it's 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 the how do your vehicles look how do your technicians look or yourself look when you walk into a place and i know there's a lot of you know you guys kind of have two prongs to this there's the side of attracting an existing plumber who's got a business going that says hey I'm, i want to convert to this because i think there's going to be more value to me long term to have a brand name that i can sell and so you got all those things the call center and the accounting and those things that are attractive to that individual uh, what about the flip side? What about the guy who says, I want to be, or, or lady who says, I want to get into this business, but I don't have a license. Are there some paths that they can go where they can get into this business without that license? Oh, absolutely. Way? We have roadmaps for all. First, if you don't know about plumbing, sewer drains, you really got to look into it because it's, it truly is one of those trades. It's, you know, one of the oldest of all time in history. Mm -hmm. It's, a lot of the infrastructure and there's a huge um, a huge lack of plumbers so understanding how training fits into this is key and then understanding the business side of it so a lot of plumbers up till now have gone in and they're they're probably one to two trucks mm -hmm. I would say the majority of plumbing companies that you're gonna run into uh, it, it's very similar to dentists in a lot of ways Ken, you, you've hired me to change your water heater. You like what I did, good job. You want me back all the time. We have mm -hmm. that bond, that relationship. So there's great opportunities for people that aren't in the plumbing business utilizing their network. Now, right. for that type of person looking to get into the industry or the business, we just have to help understand who you need to hire, right? There's plenty of master plumbers or journeyman licensed plumbers out there that don't want to be business people but are looking for an opportunity where mm -hmm. maybe they want to have a little bit more say, or maybe they want to own a little bit of the business, but they don't know anything about business. So we can go down those roads to try to find a good recruitment strategy of how we're going to, how we're going to build our, our workforce. Mm -hmm. And along with, with Z plumbers, we have training house in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where we can do hands-on training. We'll put classes on so we can certify, young men and women getting into the trades where they can do drain cleaning right away. Where, mm -hmm. yeah, they may not be able to go into a high rise building and do all kinds of stuff, but we'll tailor a marketing strategy to the, the more of the residential drain cleaning side to get going. Mm -hmm. And then kind of start building the business that way. And then eventually moving on into, you know, the more conversions where here we have a guy or a girl who owns one or two trucks and they're out there working, mm -hmm. but they're working 80 hours a week and they don't really see their profits growing. So we can help look, take a step back and say, okay, let's build a foundation of the, the business side of it. Mm -hmm. So that way it can sustain some, some positive growth. I understand there's a lot of, you mentioned earlier about the average age of a plumber being 60. There's probably a lot of plumbers out there that are even retired who have a plumbing license, right? I've heard stories of, of guys being able to mentor younger people want to get in the plumbing business or even quite frankly, be able to partner with them to allow them to use their license and, and make that possible. Is that, is that a common thing in the industry? I would say it's a very common situation, but I do know that a lot of those, those 
the older generation of plumbers and and it's not just plumbing it's pipe fitting hvac i think they don't really know what to do with their business you know maybe they thought their their children were going to get into it and take it over and mm -hmm. then that kind of didn't happen so i think uh i've definitely met quite a few that just don't know what to do they don't realize that there is equity in their business and there may yeah. be options with with selling it uh you know, going back to the yellow pages, the, the most important thing for those yellow pages was to make the phone ring. And, and there was a lot of marketing strategies of trying to find these plumbing businesses that were basically going to stop answering their phone. As long mm -hmm. as the phone rings, most potential clients or homeowners don't care who comes out and fixes it if they got you on the phone on a Friday night, right? Right. They just yeah. want a plumber. Yep. So I do think there's a lot of strategy out there to, to look at the retiring age plumbers that... You know, who knows? Maybe they got an accident. Maybe they got hurt and they just can't physically do the job anymore because it is a physical job, obviously. Yeah. So um, absolutely going out and trying to f recruit those people and, and folks to, to start would be a great idea. Yeah. Well, Belfort Franchise Group has, uh, they're, they're one of the largest service franchise companies in the world. Uh, at this time, there's 4,500 franchise territories in 55 countries around the world through our nine brands. You got chem dry carpet cleaning. You have ducks indoor air professionals. You got hoods that's in the restaurant industry. Uh, you have uh, the pack outs, 1-800 water damage, enhance, uh, patch boys, uh, all these different brands. I would think that one of the values for getting business is the cross, the sister brand cross business right. that can go. There's things that you can call guys on and say, Hey, we just had to tear out a wall and this, these people need some, some patchwork done on their drywall. So you can call the patch boys and have them come over, right? There's, there's other things that people need to call you about. So, uh, talk about the value of that. And then let's talk about, you mentioned Belfour earlier. There's Belfour offices all over the country, all over the world that need work from plumbers right. that can refer to you. So talk about those first, the franchisees and then Belfour itself. So, so, you know, think about the, the marketing whole side of things. We, a lot of it is your network, right? I mean, it's, it's who you know and how you know them and mm -hmm. where they came from. And, and having uh, to be under the, the same umbrella with all those other brands that are going into commercial kitchens and the Patch Boys, you know, drywall repair. Mm -hmm. You know, we're constantly opening up walls to fix pipes, right? So the right. Patch Boys, what a perfect relationship that is. And, and Chem Dry going into all the homes that they go into and clean the carpets. And, yeah. you know, there's so much so much so many synergies and common relations that when when you when you're a part of a group like that the just the collaboration of what marketing is working there and what marketing is working here and then having the opportunity to to be a part of that big network uh it's it's unreal and for the franchisees it, it gives them the sense of community right so right. a new franchisee for z plumbers can go meet the Patch Boys franchisee or the Chem Dry, Chem Dry oh, franchisee. 1 800 water damage. I know that's a big thing between exactly. you guys there. Yeah. And, and a lot of plumbers and water restoration, like 1 800 water damage, they already have those relationships. Well, when you buy a Z Plumbers franchise and you enter into that network, I mean, you immediately have a network around you that mm -hmm. typically would take one, two, three years to try to build, and you have it at your fingertips. And, and not only that, the support staff that comes along with that, the marketing team and the accounting assistants and the call mm -hmm. center people, uh, it, it really is a huge advantage that, that really no other brand can, can offer. What about in your, the, the original business that you built in your local area in working with Belfort? Can you give us some examples of phone calls that you get from Belfort and jobs? You know, give us a, just a picture of that. You know, so back before, uh, the whole relationship with Belfour, it was trying to understand the insurance restoration side, trying to understand the emergency restoration and how that works. Now being part partnered with Belfour and having that relationship, you learn so much and you learn how to, to you know, it's, a, it's another area with the insurance uh, mm -hmm. and, and having that emergency service. But Belfour is, is such a professional organization and, and the, the reach that Belfort has, it, it elevates you almost instantly. And, and for us, it, it was knowing and understanding the third party administrators and the insurance and how that works and getting into some of these projects that 
honestly, we would never be able to get into without having a name of Belfour behind us. Yeah. What, what are some of the size of projects? If, I, if I'm going to be a plumber and I'm going into a house, basic kind of job, what kind of, what kind of price points are there? And, and then what are some of these larger commercial opportunities? Yeah, that's a, a great question, too. You know, there's really everything from the small repairs that, um, you know, you have the handyman type jobs, right? Mm -hmm. I would say we're probably the, the, the next level up of the water heaters, faucet repairs, toilet repairs. And where we value, we like to educate the client, right? So you're going to go into a home and it may be a drippy faucet. That's really a simple repair. Well, we try, try to take the strategy of we're going to show the homeowner how to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. So that way, next time when we come to your home, you have an opportunity to fix it yourself. And they, they feel rewarded for that. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, they say, we don't want to even touch it. You do it. So <laughs> it, it kind of helps soften that, that yeah. relationship, right? With... The different size jobs, I don't want it to feel like you have to go big because we have a franchisee here in Ann Arbor. He does the, the multifamily property management residential repairs. Mm -hmm. He's not going and doing the high rises or the big new construction jobs. Mm -hmm. And then our, our franchisee down in Muncie does do more of the restoration and the bigger jobs. So it's really the comfort level. I think it's finding what you're an expert at or what you're good at and then let's hone in on that and make you the best as you are at that. You know, mm -hmm. let's build a marketing strategy that matches that. And then let's find the, the talent and the staff to help support you in there. And then if you're at the point where you feel you've got this or you just hired a new person and they're really good at this, then we can kind of shift gears and start looking at building that part of the business. Yeah. So it's really, I think, a, more of a, a tailored program and, mm -hmm. and plan. Um, because plumbing is is so big I mean, there's so many different areas that you can be an expert in. A lot of in making the money in the plumbing business, a lot of it has to do with what are your costs, right? So uh, are there any types of vendor relationships, national buying power that the brand brings to help plumbers save money on their local right. markets? We, we've really made a, a strong effort in choosing partnerships that uh, give back to the contractor. Throughout the last 20 years, the big box stores, the retail um, have really became popular. So we've tried to, to steer our path to stick with the, the manufacturers that give back to the contractors in, mm -hmm. in terms of training, in terms of uh, market share co-op, um, in terms of heavier discounts. You know, it, it, it's pretty, it, it's sad that in, in our supply chain, there's probably four or five levels of selling products from the manufacturer to the manufacturer rep to the wholesaler and then to the retailer then the plumber mm -hmm. then the end user which is the homeowner and now with the way the structure is the the big box stores are giving the homeowner the same discounts that the contractor is getting so we've we've partnered with uh, the likes of navian and uh, Spartan and Bradford White and Kohler, the ones, the manufacturers that want to make sure that the contractor stays in the game mm -hmm. and, and not going direct. And, and I understand why they do it, but it's marketing, right? If, if yeah. a homeowner goes and buys a toilet, then the manufacturers get in, get in the benefit of that. Where now the homeowner is left with, what do I do with it? You know, now I have to go out and find the contractor. Right. So we've kind of uh, positioned ourselves to be that partner. So the likes of Navian and Bradford White, right on their websites, they're sending them right to us. When there's a warranty issue, they're sending them right to us. Okay. So um, we have that great relationship with, with these, these retailers. And we've chosen not to partner with some of the manufacturers because of how they go about their supply chain. Yeah, okay. Was well, there anything that, uh, if, if a guy was Hit sitting here today, if I was sitting here today saying, I'm thinking about getting into this business, what, 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 what pitch would you give me? Well, I, I would definitely say educate yourself first. You know, you got to make sure that, I mean, one, plumbing is not always the cleanest of jobs, but it's a great opportunity and it's never going away. And, mm -hmm. and once you learn the trade, there's so many opportunities that people don't realize, whether it is in marketing or accounting or HR. I mean, it's hard for us as, as plumbers because we, we have to fight through the the image side of it and, mm -hmm. and the contractor side of it even is more. And the media and 
you know, I'm sure everyone's got the, the local hall of shame and all of those things. Yeah. And so the perception immediately of a, a tradesman is probably not as positive as it needs to be. Tradesmen are very smart. They're very ethical and they're problem solvers, right? So uh, if you if those things are appealing to you, I mean, I would absolutely suggest you, you give us a call because we have the education side of it down. Um, it's a fun and rewarding career. And the business is, is probably one of the coolest. I mean, you can see all parts of the local communities. Yeah. You get to meet all kinds of different types of people. You're never in the same place, the same more than one day or two days in a row. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. So you, you have a sense of freedom. Um, very rewarding. You get to help all kinds of people. Uh, the, the margins and the profit side and the business side, once you understand it, I, I would, they're some of the largest that I've seen. Yeah. Um, I mean, take drain cleaning for an example. Drain cleaning, you can charge a fair amount for what you do, and there's really not very much cost as far as cost of entry. You know, you've got your labor mm -hmm. wages, but there, there's not material that you have to do. You don't have to do material takeoff. You don't need these big prints to, yeah, to look at. And you know, if you want to get into a business and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get set up, then you know, go for it. But in plumbing, you can. There's a fairly low cost of entry. Um, to get in and start business. And I read somewhere 99 point something, almost ni 99 and a half percent of homes in America have plumbing, have, plumbing. have indoor plumbing. Yeah, have, so have. there's no doubt that there's, everybody sees it every day where when they turn on the faucet or they, they go to the bathroom, whatever it is, that it's right there. It, and, and nowadays it's a necessity. You know, hot water a hundred years ago is not a necessity. Today, yeah. if you don't have hot water, people just expect it to be there, right? So yeah. uh, it, it's it's truly recession-proof. There is no automation that's gonna take it away from the plumber. Mm -hmm. In a lot of ways, we still have the the need, I mean, the portable water supply, and, and everyone hears a lot about the lead, lead piping and the, the drains and the, the plagues and the infections. I mean, all of that has to do with the fact that the plumber is protecting us. Yeah. And there's no question that the water that you drink today, you don't even think about. Um, that's because the plumber is making sure it stays safe. Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to say wish you well on on the business building it up, but I, I already know that you're going to be much have much success and great success across the country as you help, because you guys not only are just selling a business or selling the marketing, but there's really that educational part that that Absolutely. you guys are taking to the next level with so many people. We so, need to do that more next time. Yeah. Talk about the hot water technologies that are coming out. And I mean, Absolutely. They're, just like automotive, I mean, things are changing so rapidly and and we have a lot to do with that, with the efficiencies, the amount of water that we use. So definitely enjoyed it and we can talk more. For yeah, sure. let's sit down. Let's do this again and uh, wish you well. Thanks, Thank Matt. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening today. And if you'd like to know more about the Z Plumbers brand, you can go to zplumbersfranchise.com.